Hello and welcome. My name is Alan Duncan and I'm the chair of the Electronics and Computer Engineering Department. And today I want to go over uh, an information session for the Electronics and Computer Engineering Technology Renewable Energy Program. So first I'd like to start off by saying that Camosun College, uh, the two campuses on the Interurban and Lansdowne uh, campuses are located on the traditional territories of Lekwungen and Wasanich peoples. And we acknowledge their welcome and graciousness to the students who seek knowledge here. The health and well-being of students, staff and faculty are a priority for our Camosun College. Because of COVID-19, we have to change the way we operate sometimes and we will follow any guidelines that the Provincial Health Officer, Works FBC, and the BC Government issue to us. Here is a slide that shows some of the faculty within our department. We have a lot of people uh, with varying backgrounds that teach across um, the six programs that we deliver. Uh, we have specialists in IT, we have specialists in electrical, and specialists in electronics and computer engineering. We also have four lab techs that support our programs as well. The Electronics and Computer Engineering Technology Program is primarily an electronics design program. So it's going to teach you about electronic components, uh, how they're connected to a microcontroller, and how to write the software or firmware that the microcontroller uses to implement functions uh, or products. Within the program, of course, we have a renewable energy flavor, uh, we have a renewable energy course, and we have a number of courses that will use renewable energies as examples. So when we're teaching controls, uh, control theory, we're going to use uh, renewable energy examples of how control theory is used in practice in those areas. And throughout the whole entire program, we um, will implement that kind of strategy. Uh, so we'll use lots of examples from the renew renewable energy area. The program admission requirements are listed on the screen. Uh, if you don't have those uh, admission requirements, you can, of course, uh, join or apply to join our related access program. There is an electronics and computer engineering technology access program, um, and it will basically uh, can take students who have grade 10 equivalents and upgrade their math, their English, their physics as necessary in order that you meet the program admission requirements. At the same time, you're upgrading. You're also learning a few electronics, uh, taking a few electronics courses um, that are going to improve your skills when you get into the technology program and also uh, make you more aware of the career path that you're actually entering into. It's a great way to do academic upgrading. You're going to be working with other students in exactly the same uh, situation and going in the same direction to the same program. So it's a great way to do upgrading uh, if, you, if you need to do that. So the first year of the Electronics and Computer Engineering pro uh, Program is also shared with students who are in the Electrical Engineering Technology Program. Um, that's another program you can actually look at. There's another presentation that will talk uh, to that. So all students basically in first year will learn fundamentals like th skills like math, physics, and English. Math is basically a language. It's a way to efficiently uh, describe relationships. And like uh, in a language like English, there are rules and syntax that have to be obeyed. And so that's basically what you're going to use the math for. It's basically a tool um, to enable us to design and understand how electronic systems function. Electronics is essentially applied physics. Physics, of course, is a, a science uh, that basically tries to understand the world around us and explain what we see and do. Um, and electronics is a subset of that. And of course, all the sensors and transducers that we use within the electronics world, of course, uh, are observing physical phenomena in the real world. And so we need to be able to relate uh, that transition from the physical world to the uh, electronic or digital world. So understanding basic physics concepts uh, is an important uh, part of a technologist's uh, education. English, of course, everyone has to be able to communicate uh, well, um, have to be able to write and 
uh, write proposals or write reports. Um, these are all sorts of things that happen in the everyday life of a technologist. And so there's a technical English, technical writing course uh, that you will take within the technology program. And uh, later on, when you're doing your capstone projects in your final semester, there's also an English course that goes along with that, assisting you with uh, creating presentations, doing oral presentations, and also writing technical reports. Circuit analysis. Um, are, is a course that basically um, teaches you the fundamentals of how circuits function and uh, about passive components and how they function and operate. So you'll learn about the rules that we can use for electronic design and analysis. Digital fundamentals, in the first year there's two courses that you'll learn about digital logic. So you'll end up understand about the logic functions, uh, physical implementation in logic gates, and also the virtual implementation in uh, field programmable gate arrays. Uh, and I've also, you know, it translates over into software where we use logic in, in software programming as well. C programming, in the first term of the program, uh, you will learn about C uh, programming language. Uh, you will use that to program an Arduino microcontroller, and you will do a number of labs interfacing LEDs and sensors uh, and LCD liquid crystal displays to that device. Um, we also have um, electronic fundamentals, analog electronic fundamental course, um, microcontroller systems course. Well, we've talked about Arduino, which is a microcontroller, but you'll also learn about PIC microcontrollers in the first year of the program as well. And of course, there's also a course dedicated to renewable energy systems. So you'll learn about fuel cells, you'll learn about hydrogen generation, you'll learn about wind turbines, you'll learn about PV panels, how they function, how they work. You'll learn about maximum power point tracking and a whole pile of other important uh, topics in renewable energies. In the second year of the program, you're going to move into more advanced microcontroller systems because this is more the sort of computer engineering side of things. Um, the screen that you're looking at right now shows a Raspberry Pi uh, um, development board. Very powerful system. Um, there are ARM-based microcontrollers. Um, with multiple cores, um, video, all sorts of things. So this unit that is on the screen there, you're gonna learn a lot about how it functions, how to code it, uh, how to run operating systems on it. Um, and in other courses within uh, the second year, you're gonna learn more advanced analog electronic systems, how you amplify, uh, how you condition, how you can filter things. In industrial electronics, you'll learn about how to control motors, uh, motor speed drives, how they function, um, how to control power, um, and RF communications, so radio frequency communications, um, how you can transmit audio, video, how you can transmit data over radio frequency signals. Um, and along with all of that, there's also a course called Digital Signal Processing, and that's a way to implement uh, all sorts of advanced features uh, in the digital realm using dedicated systems uh, for that. You'll also learn how to use Altium Designer, which is a leading um, design environment for the electronics uh, as technologist and engineer. You'll learn how to create schematics, um, which are a way of uh, designating the, uh, the the connections between various devices, and uh, also you'll learn how to design circuit boards. Uh, on the screen there, you'll see there's an area that's red and blue and yellow. Um, that's a view uh, of the different layers, um, top and bottom layers, red and blue, yellow being a layer that uh, it's basically got information on the board that's printed um, so that you can actually um, mount electronic components to these circuit boards and uh, connect up basically a system that you've designed. So being able to use Altium Designer is a complicated package, but being able to use that is, is certainly very, very useful when you're designing uh, new electronic systems. Students will learn how to design analog electronic systems. And the schematic that I was shown there on, on the screen um, is a power amplifier. It could be sort of like a 50 watt uh, MOSFET power amplifier driving a loudspeaker. So that's a single channel. So the left or the right 
that kind of channel. Um, you've got an input stage there uh, that's differential uh, to uh, amplify the signal, uh, and then driver stage uh, prior to the MOSFETs to drive this appropriate uh, signal to the MOSFETs. A large part of what you're going to do in the electronics and computer engineering uh, technology second year of the program concerns software because you're dealing with microcontrollers and for them to function they need software. Um, digital signal processing, I mentioned that earlier, that's a software based uh, system and so you'll learn about the strategies and, and techniques there. You'll also learn about um, operating systems. So Linux is a very popular operating system uh, basically because it's free. Uh, there are many dist uh, different distributions. Um, currently you can see that on the screen Mint, Ubuntu and Raspbian. Uh, of course there are many others as well. Um, so you'll learn actually how to uh, take Linux kernel and compile it for whatever specific needs you want. So if you want to put it on the Ras uh, uh, Raspberry Pi board, you can uh, create it and put it on a flash stick and then use that uh, for the board to boot from. And then it will actually run your application program on top of that operating system you've created. Um, C Sharp, of course, is another very popular uh, high level language. C++ is another, and Python, uh, again, is, is a language that's used in lots of different areas, and you're going to come across that within the electronics and computer engineering technology program. We have a capstone project uh, at the end of the program, and students get to either design a, a product or, or, a, or a, a solution that they've come up with uh, their own ideas. Um, you have to work in teams. Um, the teams can be two to three or four students, and uh, of course this is the um, part where you're going to actually get to apply your skills in uh, a real life sort of, uh, close to real life application, so that within one semester you go from a specification to the design to the implementation to basically a prototype of your system. The, proto the package has to be um, the, sorry, the device has to be packaged. And of course, we also teach in this final semester how to use 3D printers. And so that's often the way that the products are packaged. The electronics and computer engineering technology program is accredited through TAC. Um, and um, that means that um, your education is recognized across Canada and also through the Sydney Accord um, to other countries around the world. So you can take your qualification and then go work as a, a technologist elsewhere in the world or anywhere within Canada. Career choices, there are lots of different career choices and lots of different labels people are going to use. Um, uh, there's some listed there and on the bottom half of the screen you'll see some of the local companies that support our program and hire our students. Um, uh, there are um, a number of government agencies uh, that are listed um, there from the Coast Guard to D&D uh, Esquimalt where we, the students are hired in the fleet maintenance repair shops that support the Canadian Navy and the frigates. These are civilian positions, um, but there are also military positions that you can actually apply to as well. First Technology Services, they deal with um, instrumentation that's used in forest to, to log important information about weather, climate, uh, and moisture to help with fire suppression strategies um, and if the, in the event of a fire as well. And we have, of course, companies like Kermana that do solar systems. Um, there are a number of companies uh, in our local area that work in renewable uh, space with solar powered lighting, uh, street lighting, uh, signage, uh, those kind of things, uh, street walk, uh, crosswalks, automated crosswalk systems using solar power, using radio communication. Um, so there's a number of companies in that area. And of course, Schneider Electric, um, they produce a lot of power systems uh, in Vancouver. They have a division that's responsible for um, systems for uh, grid tying in PV panel, large PV panel installation systems. So there's a version of Schneider uh, develops and manufactures those gear actually in Vancouver as well. 
This screen shows a number of areas of programs that we offer. I mentioned about the access program for the Electronics and Computer Engineering Technology Program. There's also an access program for technician programs. Uh, we currently offer a uh, computer network electronics technician program as well. And of course, we've got the engineering bridge programs for electrical or computer engineering. And of course, there's a link here uh, for all the programs. You can actually go onto the website and have a look. Uh, there's information also on the website about uh, what it costs to be a student. Of course, that will change year by year, and the admission requirements may periodically change as well. And there's a lot of services at Camosun for available for students for no charge um, in order to increase their uh, wellness, uh, to increase their success, um, and, and to assist students in navigating their educational pathways. Well, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for being with me uh, for the last 15 or 20 minutes. Um, I hope you found this useful. Um, and I hope to see you uh, in one of our programs. Uh, again, if you want further information, uh, please don't hesitate to send me an email. My email is on the screen there, uh, and I look forward to meeting you at some point in the future. If you would like to have a tour of our labs, uh, please reach out to me again by email or phone me, uh, and we can arrange a time that's suitable, and you can come in and uh, have a, a review of the labs. All right. Thanks again.